All right. Welcome to Waste Some Time with Jason Green live, if you're here watching it live. Although I see there's about 25 people here bright and early, which is good because we've got a lot to get to today. We've got a lot to talk about. We are going to recap my interviews with Stephen Piercy and George Lynch. Some of them were a little controversial. Some had a little bit of backlash. We are also going to celebrate a few milestones for the channel. We're going to give some stuff away. We're going to make up because I wasn't here last week, so we got a lot to get to. So you know how it works. Uh, all that and more right after this. All right. Again, thank you for joining me. And like I said, we've got a lot to talk about today, but I got to start things off. The, 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 the big news of the day is that we have passed over half a million views. That's a lot of views. That many people have watched it, this channel. And I will tell you that that is in less than six months. That makes this the fastest growing channel of its kind. Uh, and it's not a competition. You know, I'm glad to see other people doing interviews or people who are doing it before me, but this channel is growing and it's growing constantly and is because of you for watching. We are also over 6,000 subscribers, well over 6,000 on the way to 7,000. And I said um, from the very beginning that if you guys wanted me to get bigger guests and you wanted this channel to succeed, you had to be part of it. And obviously you were. So thank you to everyone um, for the congratulations. And it, again, it's because you guys believed in this. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, it's for the Patreons who's helped support this because to be honest with you, right now, this has become a full-time job. The goal is to make it look easy. Ah, you watch an interview, it looks like a casual conversation, but there is a lot of research and there's a lot of work into going to get guests. And to me, what makes the show special is the variety of the guests. Of course, George Lynch and uh, Stephen Pierce, those are big name guys and they're going to do well. But I love being able to bring you guys like Steve Hunter, who maybe not all of you knew. You knew his music. And, and some of the hardcore guitar fans knew who he was. But I love being able to bring those guests um, to the show. And even someone like Marge Raymond, who sang with the Aerosmith guys. What a career she had. And uh, so I'm so happy to be able to bring that to you guys. And you're watching them because even the videos with the lesser known people are still over a thousand. And then we bring on an actor like Courtney Gaines from... Uh, Children of the Corn and Back to the Future. And you guys are watching that too. And so I can't thank you enough um, for supporting this channel. You know, a lot of musicians are doing this in their spare time, um, you know, because they're not playing music, unfortunately, uh, because of the pandemic or maybe they're just not that good or they're out of work. Who knows? But I take this serious. This is not just a hobby. This is not just a summer fling. I'd like to do this for a long time. This is what I intended to do. Music and things like that just got in the way and uh, acting and directing and other weird things that I've done in my life. And one day I'll discuss all of that. Um, so uh, so this is what I want to do. I've talked about working for Geraldo. I talked about going to school, the new school for social, re social research in New York to study interviewing. And uh, I believe in uh, doing, uh, doing this and doing a good job at it. And I'm appreciative that you all watch it can't believe that a half a million people have watched it. I feel like eh, it won't be long before we get to uh, a million views. And then who knows, you know, the subscribers go up. And as I've told you, this is what helps. So here's a toast to uh, all of you guys for, for watching. Now that I have half a million viewers, I can't drink out of a plastic bottle. I have my carafe, if you, if you will. So we're going to talk about Stephen Piercy. We're going to talk about George Lynch. I sent a message to Warren Demartini because everybody's beating my door down about Warren Demartini. I'm going to let you know the response from Warren Demartini. We're going to pull up the wheel of names and give my Patreons uh, uh, some cool prizes. Also, we're going to go to the comment picker. I'm going to send you guys to a video. You're going to like that video. You're going to comment, and you're going to win some prizes too. I'm going to wrap this up by talking about stupid people. And uh, because, you know, the Internet – has given a platform and a voice to, to idiots, myself included. And all of a sudden, people think that their message means something. And a lot of times it goes back to the old saying, if you don't have something nice to say, don't say it all. And so I'm going to tell you about some of the uh, people that, that I deal with just trying to put out entertainment for you guys, okay? So 
that is a that. So let's let's point out that today uh, some of the prizes are going to be uh, the chance for you to ask a question to one of my upcoming guests. This is a Patreon uh, tier. You know, I've got four tiers on the Patreon, and they're all very affordable. I make sure that that it's something that people can afford because I know we've all got a million bills these days. Um, but and it's not for everybody. I get it. Times are tough. But if you have it and you can support the channel, great. I spent the whole day at the post office shipping out uh, packages because of, for all the wins, it adds up. I had CDs and Funko Pops, so you guys will all be getting your uh, prizes very soon. And if there's anyone who hasn't gotten anything, then you'll let me know at the end of this week, and, uh, and we'll figure out what happened. Also, we try to find the best way to give things away, and the best way to do it is to make sure that you are present. So if you're watching, whoever's watching is going to win, put it like that, except for the Patreons on the Wheel of Names. Your information I already have because you're signed up. So I want to make sure that you know you can go to my Patreon right now. And I can't read every question right now. But at the end of the show, I'm going to take a second and uh, you guys can read me all your uh, – you can read me your uh, – you can ask for your suggestions for guests. Then I'll sit and talk an hour about Vito Brada and a bunch of people that no one has ever heard of, and we'll do that. Uh, hopefully, Sin City Collector can share the Patreon link right now. That would be nice. Sin City Collector is the mod today. And we thank him for being here because uh, now that we have half a million views, I can't do uh, <clears throat> everything myself. So, and I see people complaining about, about me not reading messages. And I will tell you, and I'm not trying to sound uh, that important, but it is hard to keep up with messages. Um, I have, uh, I, I get ridiculous amounts of messages. And some of them are really nice things. And some of them are people asking me for concert tickets to bands that I have no connection to. I can only imagine what A. Trunk's message is like, or someone who's actually famous on a daily basis. But I, I, I do my best, um, and I'll tell you, I'm, I'm losing a lot of business opportunities because there are people writing me to advertise products. I've been getting offered chances to host things, and I'm having a hard time. So I, I'm assembling a team of people. Uh, listen, that's enough. You don't care about my behind the scenes, but we're working on it so that I can get to your, uh, your, your questions soon. And if you feel like you're the one who made the stupid comments, Maybe I'm going to signal you out, uh, single you out, because I have a feeling today we may lose somebody. If you look on the screen right now, Sin City Collector has the Patreon link. You guys can go sign up for as little as five bucks. You can get on it. And, you know, what's going to happen is if you're on the uh, if you sign up for my Patreon and you have a little while to do it, there's only 15 people on there right now. You're going to get your name on the wheel of names. I can't think of a higher honor. I mean, honestly. What better honor would it be than to see your name up in lights right there on the wheel of names? So right now, these 15 people, they've got a good chance to win a prize. If you haven't got on yet, I'm going to give you a few minutes. You're going to go over to Patreon, patreon.com slash waste some time with Jason Green. And if you do that in the next couple of minutes, sign up for a tier, you're going to, uh, you're going to have your name added to the wheel of names. I I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm a little dizzy, actually. Um, from the wheel spinning like that. So I'm going to have a quick uh, refreshing beverage, if you don't mind. You guys have one as well. <sighs> ah. Try to make that as obnoxious as possible. And thank you, guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to share your comments uh, a little later on the screen so that the audience can see them, because what I find is the people watching these replays, they don't, uh, they don't get to see your witty banter with me. And I'm going to make sure that uh, today they can. Okay, so let's 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 dive into it. You're you're doing all that right now. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, the interviews. So Stephen Piercy interview that was the one that, that was a big one that really helped push the channel. Um, and so I don't think it's a surprise to many of you, but I obviously personally know Stephen Piercy, and I did uh, go out on the road with Rat for a while, and uh, the last version of Rat which I think is finished now, uh, probably for the better. And uh, so I've been trying to get Stephen to come on the show because I needed someone to take a chance and, and give me, uh, help me reach a wider audience. And I had seen that Stephen was doing these interviews with people um, who had less subscribers and that he didn't know these people. And I felt they weren't asking very good questions. I'll be honest, I didn't watch much of them, but I bet you they weren't. 
And I said, listen, I, I can do something here. And I kept texting him every week. Stephen, what are you doing? You can reach more people yelling out the window than you can reach on these people's channels. I will get, the, you know, people want to see it. And because of my relationship with Rat and Fake Rat, I thought we could do a good interview. And he would tell me to email his assistant and this and that. And his assistant would be his fiance. I knew who it was. So she is his partner in their movie, which is available on Asai TV. The movie is called Nothing to Lose. It's a documentary. And so finally, um, you guys are saying great stuff, but the audience can't see it. So I will signal these comments out in a minute. Um, and so finally, he, she, they got a movie to promote. So she got in touch with me and said he was ready to do it. He came on the channel. She told me some of the, thing, the talking points that he wanted to talk about to promote. But there was never any rules. No rules. Nobody told me what I couldn't ask something. When Stephen came on, some of the topics that she outlined, he didn't really want to talk about. One was his cancer diagnosis. And what makes me really mad is that so after he did my interview, he did a few other interviews. That's fine. Hey, listen, he's got to promote. They got a movie to promote. And these people use what, what was known as clickbait. And so you get these ridiculous headlines saying Stephen Piercy is uh, dying, you know, or that Stephen Piercy is in a um, is in a uh, what do you call it? He's uh, He's in a tragic situation and all these terrible things that aren't true. Stephen Piercy kept his cancer quiet. He was diagnosed with liver cancer. I was on the road with him and I, no one knew, including myself. And he was doing uh, poorly. He had a staph infection in his knee. He's had both his knees replaced, uh, you know, worked on. I don't know how they call it. He had hepatitis. The hepatitis, he believes, le led to his liver cancer. But he also, you know, he lived... He lived wild. And so he, um, he, 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 he mentioned it in the movie. And I think, uh, you know, I think one of the reasons that he, sorry, I'm texting my mother. My mother watches this nonsense and she gets confused. And right now I, somehow she doesn't realize that I'm on the, I'm on, I'm broadcasting. Mom, I'm broadcasting. I don't have time for these messages. My mother now watches this thing and she like knows people's names like uh, Steve Hunter. She's an expert on rock and roll now, my mother. So anyway, um, so these people are misleading saying that Stephen Piercy is dying. And I see people on my Facebook saying, oh, my God, prayers for Stephen Piercy who's dying. But he's not dying. And this is all the ridiculous podcast. And they're, they're saying, what if Rat is replacing Motley Crue on the arena tour, stadium tour? These are clickbait, stupid headlines. It means they have nothing to ask him, and they are just making up bullshit. Stephen Piercy is cancer-free right now. He had a piece of it removed. He goes in for periodic checks. He has to make sure that he's safe, but he's not dying. So, And I wouldn't put in my headline, Stephen Piercy, the hard truth about dying, or Stephen Piercy's cancer. We mentioned his private cancer battle. I had to wrestle with even doing that because this is not um, – this is not the angle. I, I'm not here to exploit people. And that some of these ham and egg channels, uh, that's what they're trying to do because they're desperate, you know, and they're they're trying to find an angle. This is not, uh, you know, Oprah. I mean, come on, it's 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 ridiculous. Um, so that that was one of my problems with with the Stephen Piercy interview. He didn't really want to talk about it again. He only came out because he didn't want someone else to out him that he was dying from cancer and then turned it into a, a BS headline, which is what is happening. And uh, I'm promising with this channel, substance. We get into good conversations, not, not clickbait and not lies. Okay, so uh, so anyway, uh, and then in the interview, I knew Stephen Piercy wasn't gonna talk trash. It's not what he does. He would like to reunite Rat. Does he really honestly believe that Rat will get back together? I'm not so sure. And I'll tell you, there's a lot of things that we talked about privately that I won't share. And I uh, and there's a lot of things that I knew that I didn't bring up in the interview because it wasn't the place and legal stuff. And that's this just it's not the time. But I will tell you that uh, there's this whole thing that I feel like we're trying to paint Warren Demartini into this corner. Um, and maybe he doesn't want to play. But what bothers me is the amount of people who go on my comments and act like they know everything. They know everything about Warren Demartini. Oh, Warren D. Martini doesn't want to play because he's rich. He's the heir to the Mars Chocolate family. 
You found out all this from Bobby Blotzer's press releases. I know I wrote them. I put out all Bobby Blotzer's press releases and his hate speak, if you will. And uh, But Warren Martini does play. He played two weeks ago with Sebastian Bach and a bunch of other jam people. So don't fall for these lies that are put out there. And then we're all so into it that we think we know everything. I promise you, you don't know what Warren Martini is doing. I emailed Warren Martini last night and I kind of laid it out and explain to him that people want to hear from him. And I will tell you that as of now, I haven't heard back. Um, I'm going to give him a couple of days. He doesn't check his emails every day. And uh, and then I'm going to text him. I know I'm violating privacy, but I, look, I know the guy. I'm going to text him. And I'm going to try my best to get him on here. He is not going to come on and get into a mudslinging thing with the members of RAT. Um, and I think that Stephen feels like, well, you know, I don't think he really wanted to do the current lineup. These are my opinions. I, I don't know. You know, uh, he was in an unhealthy place and he had management. I felt like it was bad management. They were making decisions. They told me at one point, who needs Warren D. Martini? We got this young kid. And they actually told me, have you seen Warren D. Martini's shoes? He's an old man. I'm, I couldn't believe it. But this was his idiotic advice. And so um, Coded Rat reunion happened it's likely, I think Bobby Blotzer might be the problem because of legal reasons, not that just that he's a complete asshole, but for legal reasons, I think that Steven seems to be okay. You know, I asked him in the interview, you got called names, you got sued. Steven seems to be okay hanging out with the guy. Okay. But I don't think those other guys will. Juan especially. I, I was in an airport here, McCarran Airport in Las Vegas, and we were sitting waiting for our flight. It was on Christmas of all times. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Only fake rat would be playing on Christmas. And we were going to Ohio. Anyway, and Blotzer was on Zillow. And he was looking up the value of the other members of Rat's houses. And he told me, I'm going to take Juan's house. Could Juan really want to play with that guy? I don't think so. And I think Stephen knows that they're not going to all get back together. But he'll go on the media and he'll be the nice guy. And say, well, I was all for it. And then in return, he'll make his solo records. And there's nothing wrong with that. So that's a little bit of, uh, about, and a lot of people are saying that they feel Bob is wrong. He is the problem. They had a good thing. They had the three of them with uh, Jimmy, I can't think of the guy's name, DeGrasso, Jimmy DeGrasso. And it was good. I, I went to see them in Minneapolis, and uh, it was good. And Carlos was there too, Carlos Cavazzo. You need Warren Martini, Stephen Piercy, and Juan. You could take Bob if he's going to do it and not piss everybody off. You know, and then Carlos, that's that's the lineup. So do I think it's going to happen? No, but it was a good break for me. And again, don't fall for these exploitive people who are so desperate that they're claiming the guy's dying. He's not dying. Um, I wanted to, before we get into Lynch, and this is where the real crazy shit stuff happens. So I want to talk about the upcoming guests. And I want to talk about your chance to ask these guests questions. Okay. So this Friday is Derek Davis from Babylon AD. If you don't know Babylon AD, this is really an underrated band. Everyone says underrated, but I really like them. They've got big hooks. This, the record came out in 1989, and uh, the interview's done. So you'll see that Friday, okay? Friday, you will see my interview with Derek Davis, lead singer of Babylon AD, and it's a, it's a fun interview. And the next week, I've been teasing this forever, The Great Cat. Somebody said that I shouldn't. I did my interview with George Lynch, and somebody said, how dare you talk about the great cat, some guitar magazine ad chick, when you have George Lynch in your presence? And then I wrote back and I said, well, let me know when you have George Lynch on your show and I'll, I'll copy you. And then I realized that person's name was Michael Devin. And I said, Michael Devin? Michael Devin's one of these guys who plays in bands, but he wasn't really in any of the bands when they mattered. And then I realized he's in George's band. And I said, what is he taking out on me? George Lynch is not a guy who's going to sit there and argue about. He wants to have fun. I thought talking about the great cat was funny. And George found it fun. George doesn't care. Anyway, he deleted his comment right away because he didn't want to be singled out, Michael Devin. Uh, and so, may, look, maybe it's another random person, but if it's not, come on. Did you really need to comment? Did you did, did you have to do that? Did you have to complain? Hold on. I, I'm, I'm getting worked up. i got to have a drink. I don't know if this is a carafe or this is a beaker. But whatever it is, it's magnificent. 
Okay, 122 people watching this nonsense. Anyway, that's next week. So, but here are the guests coming up that you can ask a question of. You're gonna win a chance, so please, and you gotta be present to win, so don't go anywhere. Big exclusive interview, I'm excited. Sammy Affa from Hanoi Rocks. He was also in the New York Dolls. He was also in Jet Boy. Sammy Affa is gonna be on the show live from Finland. And uh, you can ask him a question if you win or you go on my Patreon. Jean Beauvoir. You know Jean Beauvoir? Jean Beauvoir played in the Plasmatics with Wendy Williams. Jean Beauvoir produced and performed with the Ramones. We're gonna find out how much he actually played. I've heard some rumors that he played bass and even guitar in some very famous Ramones songs. He also wrote and played with Kiss. He played more bass in some Kiss records than Gene Simmons. We are gonna talk all about uh, all about that, Jean Beauvoir. You can ask him a question. You wanna ask Jean Beauvoir a question? You can do it. Tim Ripper Owens, he was in Judas Priest. He now has a band with K.K. Downing, K.K. Priest, I think it's called. I'll learn before the interview. You wanna ask him a question? You can do that. Greg Chasen from Badlands will be here, and then Johnny Lee Middleton, who is in um, Sabotage. In a little bit, I'm gonna get to all your questions and comments and things. Before I get into the backlash from the George Lynch interview, I wanna give you guys a chance to, to ask a question. So first, my patrons, they come first. Oh my God, the patrons keep me going. And then after my patrons, I'm gonna open it up to everybody and you guys are gonna get a chance to ask uh, uh, my question, uh, a question to a guest. And if, if you don't find a guest here that you, you have a personal relationship with uh, to ask a question, we'll hold on to it. Now, two more people have signed up. So stop the presses. I have to add their names. It would not be fair to not add their names. So just give me a second. You're, you're in good hands here. I, I'm an expert at this. It's Eric and Lloyd. Eric and Lloyd. You guys know Eric and Lloyd? Eric and Lloyd, welcome to the, uh, to the program. Uh, welcome to the Patreon. Hold on. So 15 just became 17. Uh, so let's get Lloyd on there. Okay, Lloyd is now officially on the wheel. And we got to get Eric on the wheel. Eric with a C. Eric with a C. Hold on. Any of you other guys want to get on there where I'm slowly typing? Be my guest. 17 names on the wheel. Somebody is going to get a chance to uh, ask a question of one of my guests. Again, if you don't, you, you, you have, you know, a couple months or whatever to do this. I'm going to send you a list. You're going to tell me who you want to ask a question from. I will read your name and I will Make sure that you're credited for, for supporting the channel and you'll get to ask a question of a guest. So, and by the way, being part of the Patreon, you're not just getting that. I send out all kinds of cool shit. I got new stuff made to give you guys today. I probably put more money into uh, uh, giving stuff than I make, which is fine. And we're going to do some charity stuff too. We've got a lot of big things ahead. So this is the wheel of names. Round and round it goes. The only thing I want to make sure I mention is that if uh brett wins brett already has entered in tier for asking a question so if he wins he will get a different prize otherwise here we go now we, this is how the wheel of names works if you're new to the channel the wheel of names is the most uh established brand in names on wheels this is really the place you go when you want a wheel with names and it is safe and honest and effective uh, most of the time and so you shuffle the wheel of names one two, three. So now you see, in case you were skeptical, this is a foolproof system. There is no tampering. There is no hacking. This is the wheel of names. Okay, so now I'm going to spin the wheel of names. Here we go. Good luck to all our uh, names on the wheel. Let's see who's going to win this thing. Oh, it's tough. It's tough. Oh, it's going to be. Uh... All right. So Brett won. We had a 1 in 17 chance. Brett I am going to have to give you something else because you already, unless you want to ask uh, two questions. But Brett, I will contact you. You're a Patreon, and so it's easy enough. So, okay, we're going to take care of Brett. But we want to make sure that we take Brett's name off the wheel of names. Now there's 16. I want to give somebody else a chance. This is very easy. You're going to have a chance to ask one of my guests a question on the wheel of names. Okay, so to make sure that this is completely uh, uh, transparent, we shuffle three times. One, 
two, three, there's 16 names. Here we go, wheel of names. I know you're on the GUC. These other guys don't give you the wheel of names. I give you the wheel of names. Ooh, that's close. That was close. Oh my God, Paul. Paul, you just, you just made it, Paul. I can't believe it. Paul, thank you so much for playing the wheel of names. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you did that. You know what? I'm going to give everybody a chance to, to go sign up for my Patreon. And you know what? I might give away another, another question on the wheel of names. I may do it. I, I can do it. It's my channel. I can do it. Um, okay. But let, let's, now you're thinking to yourself, well, what if I'm, a pa I'm not a Patreon? And what if I, I like you, but I don't like you enough to support your channel? Kevin, you're still going to have a chance. Trust me. Um, so if, if you guys want to sign up for the Patreon, though, there, there, is, there it is right there. Excuse me for just one moment. All right. So anyway, there's the Patreon. Now I'm going to send you to a video, folks. If you're, too, too, if you, if you're not on the Patreon, that's fine. I, I still like you. What we're going to do is we're going to do a thing called the YouTube comment picker, and then we're going to talk about some of these uh, idiots on, on my channel. And on all channels, and on how the world of the internet is stupid. This is the video that I want you to go to. Now, uh, what's, uh, the Sensity Collector will share it as well, but I've got it up on the screen. So I have a second channel that is right now, I'm just slowly putting content on it because I want to, uh, I need to separate it. The rock and roll interviews are doing great. It's a separate thing. I want to do a channel that has, um, the Funko Pop stuff, and then also the locations and places I visit, behind the scenes stuff, tour logs. I was out of town on uh, last week in Los Angeles, made some really great uh, video. And so I wanna share that with you, but I gotta do that on this other channel. So what we need to do is I need you to go to the YouTube video that I shared. Then I need you to, uh, uh, hold on. Um, uh, my mother can't figure out how to log on. She, she's, she's, she said it will begin in a few minutes. Uh, this is what you get. It's probably better she's not here because I, I might curse a, a little bit. Uh, okay, so let's see how many subscribers the channel has. It's called The World of Jason Green. Right now it has 128 subscribers. I want you to go to the channel, The World of Jason Green. I want you to subscribe. I want you to go to this video. This is a fun video. It's a video of me opening Funko Sodas blindfolded. It's amazing. And if you don't like it, that's okay. Just do it for me. It's fine. So click like. And in that video, hashtag the world of Jason Green. There is no E on the end of Jason Green. Hashtag the world of Jason Green. The Sensity Collector, if you would, maybe you can write that out for people that can copy and paste it for the uh, uh, grammatically and spelling impaired. So it's easy. You go to that video and you're going to win if you're watching. 115 people watching right now. You're what you're going to win. You're, you're, one of you watching is going to win uh, because I, uh, I'm not letting anyone win unless they claim the prize. So you go there you watch, and let the video play for a second. YouTube will disqualify you. Listen, we're manipulating the system here. I need to get 1,000 subscribers and I need to get 4,000 hour views. And this is the way we do it. We get you to go over there and support. Maybe you're a bigger fan of the, of the rock and roll. That's fine. Okay, it's up to 132, which means you're doing it. And I like that. And it's helping me. And you're going to get to ask a question of some of the guests. And then we're going to go to a thing called the random comment picker. It's not quite as fun as the Wheel of Names. So you've got a little while to do it. Sin City Collector, uh, he's showing you right here how to do it. I'm checking his work. Okay, that's it. Hashtag the world of Jason Green. Go to the page, like the video, subscribe drop the world of Jason Green hashtag. It has to be exact because the random comment picker cannot uh, decipher otherwise. Okay, so that's it. And then and then maybe I'll give away one or maybe I'll even give away two. I, I'm feeling crazy tonight. I, I could give away the whole the whole house. Um, so anyway, please, uh, please do that. Okay, so and now let's talk about uh, the George Lynch interview. So I get I had the amazing um, uh, yeah, here since the collector's explaining it for those of you watching, he'll explain, he'll walk you through this because you got to come back to this video to find out that you want. You open another window, it's 
tell the folks. And then I'm going to get to your questions. I promise you're all saying great things. And uh, okay, now let's let's start. So anyway, George Lynch. I've known George Lynch a long, long time. I think I met George Lynch. I mean, I met him when I was a kid in New York, but got to know him working with him around 2010. I brought him out to Las Vegas four or five times. He's one of the funniest guys. And he's an odd guy at times. And he's very dry. And most people think he's uh, screwing with them. So when I put the interview out with George Lynch, a lot of people thought he was being mean to me. Uh, uh, oh, he's screwing with you. He called you an amateur engineer. We talked for 10 minutes before I recorded. That's usually how what I do it. I say hello to the person. We set it up and then I introduce them. They're in a, a virtual green room. And George made the joke that he was, he, we should have just played off for everything. He said crazy stuff. I didn't know if he wanted it out there. And I, and I should point out that George was two hours late. I was going through a, a publicist who managed, who manages George's interview schedule and he wasn't doing any interviews and George was getting to go on the road, getting ready to go on the road for two weeks. He was driving. And so the guy set it up for me, but luckily I had George's number and I just kept texting George, what is going on? Cause I was going out of town the next day. And uh, I, had, I wanted to get it done. This was an opportunity. If he was going to be on the road, I wouldn't get the chance. And so George keeps telling me I shouldn't have took this interview. I got so many things, but give me a little bit more time, and uh, and we'll we'll do it. Two hours. I'm laying on the couch. Finally, he he shows up and he tells me he's ready to ready to go. And I didn't want to do an interview where we just talked about docking again. You know, uh, I could show, I, I did that with Jeff Pilsen. You can check it out where I just show pictures of the records. And I think George will come back and I think we will do that. I think George will come back and talk about Dawkins. But I wanted to talk about some different things. It's amazing to think that George Lynch used to play the Starwood the same time as Randy Rhodes and Eddie Van Halen, same nights, and that he knew these people. He was closer to Eddie Van Halen, as he points out. Um, and George is the only one of those three, obviously, who's alive. And so George has amazing stories. I also never knew that George was in um, Rat and that Warren Demartini was in Dokken. I had no idea. And I thought that that was kind of uh, an, interesting, uh, an interesting topic to talk about. And so, um, and so we did. And so, uh, and yes, I, as you see, George, I think George was looking for more storytelling. I had a lot of fans comment. I met George and he seemed like kind of a jerk, but after watching your interview, I get it now. Um, one time I was doing a show with Rat in Orange County, I think it was the Orange County Fair or something. And me and my friend, she was there. She wanted to take a photo with George. And I said, I know him. I, I, I'll introduce you. So I took her, her over. There was nobody there. It was the afternoon sound check, empty uh, arena. And George, I said, George, can she take a photo? And he goes, you know, uh, I've been waiting here in this spot all day just to for you to ask me to take a photo. That's who George is. Then he went into Rat's dressing room and he said, you guys have candy? Oh my God, I didn't know you had candy. And he made this big whole thing and then Stephen allowed him to have some of his candy. Are you sure? I don't want to take all your candy. He's just screwing around. That's who he is. And then he looked at Stephen's shorts and he said, oh my God, I need to get a pair of shorts like that. And Stephen tried to explain to him where he can get them. And George's answer was, but I just want those. Can is there a place where I can go and ask for the Stephen Pearson shorts? And Stephen has known him. They've known each other for close to 50 years, I think. It's crazy to think that, but uh, something like that. And even he, Stephen's falling for George's uh, ridiculousness. And that's just who he is. So now let's get to some of the controversy. Because now you know who George is. You know he's a fun guy. And I thought the interview was great. So he says at one point, and listen, for you political folks at home, I've always said there is not going to be any politics and any pandemic on this show. Some of my guests are in the media right now saying what might be viewed as crazy things. I'm not going to comment or say who they are. You know. But we need to realize that we're in a crazy time. And it's not, I don't want to say one side is right and one side. There shouldn't be sides. It's all, it's us versus the pandemic. You, you know what I mean? But I try not to talk about it. My, in, we're, we're talking now. This is different. If you don't like it, log out. But you'll miss the wheel of names. Um, but for everybody else in my shows, I don't do it. I've edited people a little bit. 
because I don't want to get into it. Music is the universal language. You watch this because you don't want to think about the horrible world outside this window. You don't want to, you don't want to think about it. Trust me. Um, you should see outside that window. And so um, the Grim Reaper is out there right now. It's a sickle. I'm not going to open it. Would you? So, um, and I'm not talking about the Rock You to Hell band either. Um, so a lot of people are bent out of shape. And so he made a remark in the interview that most of you probably didn't even notice. He said that a lot of men come to docking concerts and George Lynch concerts and that he wanted to have more women in the audience. So what he did is he hired an agency to put actors in the audience, much like Donald Trump did. OK, that's what he said. Now, he was joking. He didn't hire actors. And he said he wanted to. That's how he was going to get more women. People went crazy. They went crazy. Now, they're the, they're the minority of people, I should point out. The majority said really nice things and enjoyed the interview and wanted to talk about rock and roll. But, oh, my God, how dare you say bad things about Donald Trump? That's our president. Oh, our former president, maybe. Whatever, whatever, whatever. But I don't care. And I don't think he – the joke would have worked with anybody. It would have worked with anyone who pays extras, Okay. Donald Trump paid people to show up at his rally. And if somebody else, did, I don't care what party he's in, who cares? He did it. And George made a joke. Now, maybe George doesn't like Donald Trump, but that isn't what he said. And I didn't cut it because it really wasn't about politics. It, he was making a joke. And um, so, so many people commented about uh, that they don't like that he got into politics. I can't watch this talking about politics. But here's the thing. You missed a great interview. Who cares? I've had guests on here who have different feelings politically than me. I should point out that I, uh, see, we have somebody who's upset right now. Yeah, I look, here, I'll put you on here. He didn't go there. I'll have a conversation with you, Stephen. You're saying Trump didn't do it. He did do it. There's proof. There's a million proof. Google it. Snopes it. Look it up. All politicians do it. They need to have people show up at the rallies and hold signs. So, Stephen, just because you have a YouTube account doesn't mean you know. Do some homework. Only one political side has any problems in my debates, by the way. I don't know why, but somehow it's only one side. This is the right, right? I don't give a fuck. Do you understand? If you're watching, I don't care. I don't care if you voted for Trump. I don't care if you voted for Biden. That's your business. Yeah, I don't care. But so if you're going to go on here and you're going to defend Donald Trump, well, what, I don't care about that either. But what, what's funny to me is that uh, here, here's here's Stephen again. Stephen, I don't mind arguing with you. You, you say, I, I believe what's online. You're online. Am I supposed to believe you? It's a fact that politicians need to get people at their events, and yes, they pay them. Actors are extras. It, it happens to everybody. I don't care if you like Donald Trump. It doesn't matter to me. Anyone who loves politicians is an idiot. If you sit at home and worry about a rich politician who doesn't give a fuck about you, you're an idiot. If you like Donald Trump, he is laughing at your stupid ass. He doesn't give a fuck about you, you moron. You like Joe Biden? He doesn't care about you either. Who cares? They're looking for votes. So please, please save your politics. I, because this is what I'll say to you guys. And, and then as far as when Obama was the president, everyone said bad, horrible things. But then Trump was the president. They said, you've got to respect your president. You've got to respect your president. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, um, and so the, the, you you. What happened to respecting the president? I was told during Trump not to say anything bad about him. And now, don't be a crybaby. If your guy lost, man up. Okay? Man up. So I still have not told you my political opinions. I, I, I don't care. But don't go in my comments and tell me that you're crying because of Donald Trump. Fuck you. I don't want you in my, on my channel. Unsubscribe. I'll take your name off the wheel of names for Christ's sake. Okay? It's stupid. It's stupid. Get a life. I had to hire mods now to go through my comments, to take out the stupid comments, okay? Because, I, and I love reading the nice things that you people say, I love it. I love it. I love to hear the nice things that people say. 
and I like to talk about music. And I like to sit and write back to as many of you as I can and talk about music. So if a guest comes on, I've had guests on the other side too. And then that turns into a fight. I don't want it, okay? And it's my channel. This is not, uh, this is not the Metal Sludge message board. This is not blabbermouth. I've got the final say, okay? In the interviews, the guest has the final say. It's not about me, it's about them, okay? So, again, don't be a crybaby. Politics are stupid. Don't worship politicians. Why would you ever, uh, why would you ever worship a politician? Get a life, get a life. And I'm gonna promise you that some of your musicians like people that you don't like. Some of my favorite musicians have different political views than me. Who cares? I listen to them for music. Maybe you want to hear Wang Dang Sweet Poon Tang, but you don't like Ted Nugent. Who cares? Listen to his music. Don't listen to his politics. Maybe you like Eddie Vedder, but you don't like what he stands for. That's fine. Listen to his music. That's the point of this. And again, I have not told you anything about how I feel. I'm not giving you my political opinion because I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter. I know who I vote for or what I, if I vote. I know what I think about the pandemic. I know what I think about vaccinations. Jeez, you guys want to hear that? Tune into a politics show, right? If a guest says something you don't agree with, don't watch. And you're probably an idiot. And there's a lot of positive comments here. And I appreciate all of you. And, and, and don't go on and say, I watch too much CNN because you're an asshole. I, I don't watch CNN. I don't watch any of this horse shit. Okay? I, I'm getting worked up. I need a drink. Okay, so, um, so that's the that's the whole thing about the politics. And then later in the interview, he talks about he made a movie called Shadow Train, and in his Shadow Train movie, they talk about uh, uh, some Native American things. I don't really want to get into the whole business. And by the way, I'm with uh, you. I don't care that Ted Nugent's politics, but I don't like that he kills animals for sport and for fun. Fuck him. I don't relate to him. I personally don't like his music anyway, so it's not a hard problem. Anyway, um, so then people started getting mad about the Trail of Tears and the Native Americans and America, and then they're mad again. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. I don't, I, I'm not interested. I didn't start this channel for that reason, okay? And and you, I know some of you are going to block me. Um. <laughs> Jonestown, you're 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 asking about people that. Here, I'm going to answer part of this question. The question is Blaze. Blaze moved to Nashville. He tours with a really successful band. I forgot the name of it. <laughs> it's country music. That's why. And uh, he was touring with Carrie Underwood. And Blaze is one of the best guitar players ever. And Blaze would have been better in any rap than anyone else besides Warren D. Martini. He was a great guitar player. And I don't know about those other clowns. Okay, so. Again, you are watching this and you're getting angry if you don't agree, but I don't even have a point to agree or disagree with. So please, when you watch my interviews, if you don't like what a guest says, keep it to yourself. And, and anyway, so yeah, so that was, there was a little bit of controversy and I, I find myself deleting these people and I'm thinking, well, why is, why is Trump like taking over our lives? It's okay if you liked him or you voted for him. It's okay, that's your business. But don't 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 turn it into a fight, and then don't get mad at me for someone else's opinion. He didn't give an opinion, okay? So that's the that's the deal on the politics. Now let me talk about these other idiots, because the problem with YouTube and social media is that every moron has a uh, a soapbox now, you know, uh, uh, you know, a a chance to voice themselves. Now, when you go to the mall and you order a pizza, you put it on your Facebook. It's a statement. And when someone famous dies, you, um, hold on. Uh, here's, I, I like this one. George Lynch and Michael Sweet are good friends and Sweet is most likely a Trump supporter. I would bet that Michael Sweet is a Trump supporter. The point of that also is that George said in the interview that he's atheist. Here's another controversy. And thank you for reminding me. Uh, he's an atheist. Who cares? Are you really that concerned with people? Michael Sweet doesn't mind. Michael Sweet's a very Christian person. 
And I also never say my religious um, uh, uh, thoughts either, because that's not part of the show. This is a different show. We're behind the scenes right now. This is us talking. But on my show, you will never hear me talk about politics, pandemic. We will talk about music, okay? You want, you want to know about music? You want to know fun stuff? Uh, that's what we'll talk about. We talk about the great cat, for Christ's sake. That's what we talk about. Have you seen the great cat? Well, you're going to. And you're, this is the most ridiculous interview I've ever done. I don't even know if I really did an interview. I don't even know if I actually saw the great cat. I'm not positive what happened. I can promise you that she's not wearing much clothes. That I can tell you. Uh, and I will tell you that she's disturbingly attractive to me in her own way. So, um, and I should point out that like, uh, sometimes we use politics to stir up trouble, you know, and don't do it. Don't fall for it because they don't care about you. Don't care about them. And so I won't fall for it. But I will tell you, if you go into my comments and you say anything about politics, I'm going to delete you. Okay. And YouTube's really easy because then I'll just block you. And then you'll just never get to see these interviews again. That's it. It's that easy. Now, I want to make sure you guys are doing the comment picking. So, um, Sin City Collector, please uh, post it again because I got I to gotta get someone to ask a question. And by the way, don't, don't use this as an excuse to ask a question about politics uh, because I, I won't. That, you'll have to pick again. Dealer's choice. So anyway, and religion. Who cares? What do you, George Lynch is atheist. So what? So what? I'm going to take your questions in a minute. I see you guys getting all worked up with these questions. I know somebody wants to talk about Wolfgang Van Halen. Does anyone else not give a fuck about Wolfgang Van Halen? Listen, I like Van Halen. I like Eddie Van Halen. He's probably a nice kid. I'm not, uh, I'm not seeing him. If I was to see Guns N' Roses, I would get there late. But I will tell you this. Are you guys running out to concerts in these big crowds? I don't, I don't, well, I'm not. We can make a list every week of the shows that are getting canceled, right? Who canceled this week? That, that's the, uh, you know, we know the Bullet Boys, they got the COVID. Leonard Skinner, they got it. Tesla got it. These, these bands are all canceling their tours because they're getting sick. It doesn't seem to make sense to, uh, to, to be going out right now. So, Am I going to risk my life to watch a, a, a big mammoth uh, guy? No. Uh, uh, and uh, yeah, it, it's. I love live music, but I, I'm staying home. You guys, go, you guys go see the live music for me, and uh, and, and God bless you or whatever. Can't you know? So okay, so since the collector shared the link, go to YouTube, subscribe to that channel, and. Uh, you know, Megadeth has even bigger problems, but hey, subscribe to that channel, like that video, and then we're going to pick some winners so that you guys can ask questions. Because I, 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 I like this. And I want you to know we can all uh, be virtual friends without getting into what, we, our, our, what our beliefs are. Okay? So, and, uh, and by the way, maybe, maybe Mammoth Van Halen's music is amazing. Maybe it's great. I don't know. I just don't really care. It's not, it doesn't look like it's for me. I heard a little bit, and I went, Wow. That's not for me. Um, he did say that if you don't like him and you think he got things for uh, using his last famous last name, that you can eat his entire ass. And uh, I thought, what an odd thing to say, his entire ass. And then I thought, if you were going to sit down to eat his entire ass, what, a, uh, what an appetite you must have. Uh, anyway, here's a good question. Are, am I working on new music? Well, about time. Let's talk about me. Well, what do we need to talk about everybody else for? Um, it's my show. I got a record called The Death of a Nation. There it is. It's a signed copy. That's a very collectible, uh, collectible collector's item. This photo on the back here, this was taken at the uh, uh, Mob Museum here in Las Vegas. That is the actual mall from the uh, wall. Sorry from the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Does this one have a CD in it? It does. And uh, and anyway, you can't get these. It was a long story. We got involved with Pledge Music. They ripped us off. And they, you, you can't find those. Maybe we'll repress it. I'd like to put it out on vinyl. And then also, um, no, boy, people are asking. People, I'm trying to get to everybody. Hold on. Um, Lloyd, thank you very much. I'm glad you're entertained. This is what this is about, entertainment. And then here's a question from K-Bear. 
and uh, Dan Wexler or Steve Blaze. Steve Blaze, I'm getting all the time, and I got to get back to that. I got a nice guy who uh, wrote me about Steve uh, Blaze from Lillian Axe, and I'm going to get to it. So, and I was wondering, I wanted to, you to see uh, a Taskmaster. We were talking yesterday. You hadn't gotten your CD. And you were sad because you saw that I'm giving giving your CD away. So here it is. I'm going to give your CD away. Yeah, again, anyway, that one could be yours. Who knows? Anyway, uh, so yeah, I'm working on new music. Scotty Griffin and I, who is the singer in the Cincy Rejects, we're talking about doing a few things. We've written some songs, but we also have had this dream to do this uh, punk version of 50s songs because 50s music really was the beginning of punk rock, if you know anything about music and uh, kind of do a rejects rock around the clock kind of thing. Something a little different for us, but really fun. And we're gonna start that very soon. But Scotty is on the road with Riley's LA Guns. And so it takes a minute to get to that. I wanna give somebody something and then we'll talk some more. And then I gotta get out of here. So we got, I, I got a, a very busy evening uh, of doing nothing. Okay, so let, let's show you how this works because I don't really know how it works either. He goes, talk amongst yourselves, will you? Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to go to a thing called the random comment picker. If you haven't got in there yet, get in there. What are you waiting for? Okay, so there, if, if you're looking at the screen right there, you see the random comment picker. Now, I go to the YouTube video that we just watched that I asked you to go like and subscribe and do all those things. And let me just see and make sure people are doing it. And hopefully you're watching it for a minute. Hold on. See, if I had a team, this would be much easier. But, you know, if I could just hire hire uh, actors to act like they work for me, I don't know. I, I don't know if this works. Well, let's see if this works. All right. I'm going to say, here we go. Uh, random comment picker. I paste the link. I think you're watching me do this live. Then we're looking for a certain word. So we want to... Uh, Filter comments based on a specific text. There it is. Okay, so then I'm going to put in hashtag the world of Jason Green. Okay. At YouTube comments. Now we're shuffling the deck. Let's see how many people actually said it. It's probably embarrassing if no one said it. Come on. Okay, there's 13 comments. It says right here. So 13 of you are in. This is an easier way to win uh, than anything. Here we go. Start now. Start now. Here come the names. Oh, I recognize some of these names. Dave Schwartz. Dave Schwartz. May the Schwartz be with you, Dave. Dave Schwartz, are you watching right now? Dave Schwartz, are you watching? Let's get Dave Schwartz. Sin City Collector, you keep an eye out for Dave Schwartz. And when you see him... I see him. I was gonna say highlight his name, but here. Okay, Dave. So now comes the most complicated part. You need to get a hold of me so we can discuss who you want to ask a question of. Okay, Dave Schwartz. So, uh, and and since the collector is gonna put up the best way to get a hold of me right now. Okay, Dave. And I'm excited. And I hope you. Uh, I hope you've got uh, somebody cool in mind and some good questions. And I'll give you a little time. So. Make sure you get, and I'm going to pick another one right now. But, uh, okay, here we go. Pick another winner. I'm going to pick one more. Lucky Lloyd. Lucky Lloyd. Oh, my God. Lucky Lloyd, congratulations. You are also going to ask a question of a guest. And uh, Sin City Collector, put up the way to get a hold of me. Don't give them my phone number because they will write me uh, nasty things and how how dare you talk bad about my president? That's my president. He never lost that damn election. I don't even know what I'm talking about. Excuse me. Anyway, by the way, this is for entertainment in case you didn't know. Okay, so Lloyd, is Lloyd here? Lucky Lloyd? Lucky Lloyd? Uh, we need to make sure Lucky Lloyd is here. Lucky Lloyd. Congrats. All right. Lucky Lloyd. Figure it out. I see someone sitting in any Entourage fans. Yeah, I, I remember Lloyd from Entourage. Uh, 
Well, here we go. This I like this. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing Jason Green's music as I'm unaware of his bands. I just waste time watching his interviews. Well, thank you. Thank you. Peace music. There's Lucky Lloyd. And Lucky, Lo Lucky Lloyd, you join the Patreon and you win the comment picker. It's okay. It's okay. All right, here we go. You know what? You guys want to pick a comment, and then we'll we'll talk a little more, and then I'll get out of here. All right. I hope you guys are entertained by this, um, because I I I know I am. All right, here we go. And by the way, super chat. Do you guys know about the super chat? Oh my God, the super chat is fantastic this time of year. You can uh, uh, have your comment highlighted for a small fee, and then I can see your high comment before everybody else and highlight it. And then you uh, you help uh, feed my family. You know, uh, I got I got cats. I got two of them. One of them has a uh, a thyroid uh, condition, and he he's got a he's, medicine's not cheap. You know what I'm saying? So uh, super chat for the cat, would you? Um, if you're dumb enough to give to politicians, uh, please give to my cat. That's how you get a hold of me. Instagram, and that is the best place. Since the collector, thank you. You are right. Instagram, because I don't get too many messages there yet. But uh, uh, um, you know, don't don't send nudes, please. Don't send nudes. Uh, well, it, it, it depends. Uh, so okay, here we go. Uh, we're gonna. I want to spin the wheel of names again. I don't know what we do if Lucky Lloyd wins though. This is for a Patreon, okay? And uh, and you're gonna get to ask a name, a, a question or two, and we'll spread this out, you know. But uh, so essentially, this is a upgrade of uh, of uh, blah blah blah. Uh, I meant to have the cat come on for sympathy, so that I can win. Uh, uh, so the hold on, I'll show you the. Well, first we'll spin the wheel, and then I'll show you the cat. The cat will get all the super chats. Hold on. All right, hold on, everybody. Wheel of names. You know how it works. Shuffle three times. One, two, three. Here we go. Spin in the wheel. Good luck to all my names on the wheel. Matt. Matt. Congratulations, Matt. Matt, are you, uh, I hope you're excited. I hope you're ready to ask a question of a guest. You too can ask questions of my guests if you go to uh, uh, Patreon. Now, uh, while you celebrate with Matt, I'm going to show you my cat. Don't go anywhere. Keep watch the junk in the background. I'll be right back. All right, the real star of the show is here. He does not believe in politics or pandemic. That is six toes I had to wake him up. He's a little skinny because of his uh, thyroid medicine. Yesterday he went to the vet and they told me that it was time to up, the, uh, we have to up his medicine. He's not very good at uh, six toes. Look over here, there you go. See, a super chat for six toes from my attorney. <laughs> By the way, if you're looking for a good attorney, uh, Tim's watching. You know, and Tim and I had a, a big conversation today that uh, he's going to handle my deals because people are asking me to advertise things like crazy, you know, and sell products. And I would love to do that. Uh, Look at all the people who love Six Toes. Oh my God! And Six Toes, he's he's a he's a big boy. There you go. And his name is Six Toes because he has six toes on each paw. I should have named him. Okay, love you, Six Toes. Go go do your thing. I should have named him Twenty Four Toes. Anyway, uh, that's a great cat. Good comment. Yeah, the greater cat. Yeah, and I should point out that Six now he wants to hang out. Six Toes is like 15 or 16 years old. And I feel like the, when I grew up in New York, they had these guys come on the subway with a pet and then try to get you to give them 
uh, yeah, give them money and they make you feel bad. So that's what I'm doing with six toes. Um, anyway, I want to uh, thank you. And, and it's, it's thanks to you guys that six toes gets his medicine each month. I want to, uh, yes, I get a lot of people asking where to buy my music. Um, so I'm working on all those things, you know, because since he rejects is out of print and it should be back in print, we're also recording some new music. And because of the success of this channel, which is thanks to you, uh, you know, over half a million views um, that we will, uh, that we will make that stuff available again. And I hope you like it. It's a little different. You know, I know a lot of my fans uh, or friends or whatever you followers are metal fans and my music's more punk. But uh, Mandy Line, you're asking about, you know, I almost played bass for Mandy Line. I was going to go before the pandemic. No one's ever heard this story before. This is secret information. This is a blabbermouth headline. I got to have a drink. Hold on. Um, yeah, Ron Mancuso, who's an amazing guitar player and producer for Dags and Thieves, he asked me to get involved, and I was working with these guys, and uh, the pandemic happened, and, you know, it, it fell through. But who knows? It could happen again. Mancuso watches this, and I talked to him and Mandy, and I would love to go play bass with somebody else and do something different. Um, so anyway, about to wrap up the George Lynch thing, I jump around, but I'm back. Um, so people were mad about politics. And then the other type of person I don't like is the people who, uh, I like comments like this though. I like the nice comp, uh, I like the nice, I like the nice, uh, comments, but my problem is I get these people go, your microphone is so much louder than George Lynch's microphone. Uh, somebody asks here, did I ever talk to Eric Dover? Yes, I did, and it's on the channel. So please go watch that interview, and you'll like it. Um, and here's somebody who likes Jason Green with an E on the end. That is, uh, there's no E on the end of Green, as you all know. So okay, uh, uh, <laughs> you guys have blown my mind here. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to broadcast. Don't write to tell me that my volume is louder than somebody else. I'm on a professional broadcasting system. George Lynch is on a cell phone in his, in his man cave. And it, to be honest with you, who cares? Who cares? I don't care. I don't need to, you to tell me. It, uh, I can't believe you ask questions like that. I can't believe. Don't be an asshole. Don't be an asshole. I don't care. I don't need your opinion. Why are these interviews not in HD? I don't, I don't got time for that. I don't know. I don't know. When, when my big team gets to work, it'll be in HD, okay? Who, who, who wants to look at me anyway? Or George Lynch in HD. We look just fine in SD, okay? For Christ's sake. Just uh, just, just calm down. When you're going to comment on I've never commented on anyone's video, ever. And I certainly wouldn't comment to say, you know, I think the audio was a little off. No shit. It's like I said about... Uh, it's like I said about in Christmas Vacation, Chevy Chase busts his ass. Clark Griswold puts the lights on the tree. And then his uh, father-in-law says, you know, Clark, the little lights aren't twinkling. And he says, I know, Arden. Thanks for noticing. That's how I feel. I know your stupid shit. I know it. I know. You think I don't see that there was a problem in the interview? You know, at the end of the interview, the sound went out for five. No kidding. No kidding. No kidding. Get a life. Okay. Don't comment negative things. Nobody cares. And you don't want me to uh, block you or one of my mods, Sensity Collector. He's bored out of his mind. He's sitting in there waiting. He's, Sensity Collector wakes up in the morning and goes, I am going to kick one of these people off today. You know, you don't want to tempt him. And he also has no uh, stance on politics or pandemic. He's been sworn in. Was, uh, so, <laughs> yeah, you, you get what I'm saying imported Italian lights. So there's really great things coming up on this channel. So let's keep it positive, okay? And if you watch this and you think, Lloyd, thank you. This is not Lucky Lloyd. This is just Lloyd. Lloyd and Lucky Lloyd are different people. He's watching a 55-inch TV and it looks good. What are they thinking? Lloyd, I watched this on a 70-inch TV and it looks fine. Who cares? What, what, what do you want to see? I am not the... Uh, 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 you know what I'm saying. 
I don't need to be seen in crystal clear. This is the part of the show where I highlight some of your comments, by the way. So if you want to ask me about Harry K. Cody or Vito Brada, and I was going to address Vito Brada. You know, I meant to come on here today with a with a organization, and I just it got away from me again. It got away from me. Everyone wants to know what I'm drinking, but this is a very uh, this is a very sophisticated recipe. It involves a, a very special water and uh, some lemons, and this is only to be drank in a thing like this if you have over half a million views. Can you believe we have half a million views? Anyway, uh, we get some more um, super chats. I'll get my other cat though. <laughs> not, not, above, not above that. Anyway, let's, uh, let's, let me finish the point that I was saying, uh, Vito Brada. So everyone wants to hear from Vito Brada or Warren Martini, and I completely know that. But what happens is people go on these comments and they speak as if they know. I promise you, you don't know. If you want to know what Vito Brada is up to, go to my interview with Greg D'Angelo on this channel. And he gives you a pretty honest answer. Greg, uh, Vito Brada has had some problems with his hands. This is not a secret. And he does not want to play live music again unless, uh, unless it's, the, as good as it was when he was known for it. He was a very, you know, he's an amazing guitar player. And so he, he, that, and he's caring for his family. You know, he's, he, he lives in Staten Island. He's a good uh, Italian boy and he's taking care of his, his father. He never says that he doesn't want to play, or, but it, they, they have to find the right way to do it. And they all sort of think it's open. But don't go on there and say what you, you Vito Brada spoke one time to Eddie Trunk and that was like, 10 years ago. But Greg D'Angelo does speak to him and he says in the interview. So if you want to get an honest answer, that is where you should check. Okay. And uh, uh, and the same goes with Warren T and Martini. Don't quote shit that you heard somebody say in the media. You don't know until we get, let's check our emails. We, by ours, I mean mine. Maybe Warren wrote back. I think it's a long shot. I think I'm gonna have to hammer him a few times to get him to finally come on. Let's see if he's responded. Uh, dear Jason, go fuck. Oh, uh, no, he has not. <laughs> he's not responded. Guys, almost time to wrap it up. Who's coming up on the show? I bet you want to know. That was my notes. This Friday, Derek Davis of the band Babylon AD. I like Babylon AD. I think it's a good band. I think it's an underrated band. I think Arista Records didn't know what to do with them. We're going to talk all about RoboCop 2. Because that's what you guys want to know about, RoboCop 2. Kid goes wild, bang goes the bell, hammer swings down. We're going to talk about it. The Great Cat. I'll be honest with you. I keep teasing The Great Cat as if, because uh, uh, I don't know what to do with this. It's the oddest interview I've ever done in my life. If you don't know who The Great Cat is, you're in for a treat. If you do know who she is, you're in for a treat maybe. It, it's not the longest interview. I will tell you that she insists that I uh, worship her. I'm, and I, I may. I may. I may do it. And, uh, and she's in her underpants. <laughs> Sammy Yaffa. I'm going to be talking to Sammy Yaffa live this Saturday. He's promoting his first solo record. And uh, uh, you can ask a question if you won one of those things. And if you didn't win a question, please go to the Patreon, Sin City Collector Share, sign up, get in there. It's cheap. And you can ask questions. Uh, make sure you pick the right tier. There's tiers. John Beauvoir, I've talked about Ramones, Plasmatics, Kiss, he's coming on. Tim Ripper Owens, former singer for Judas Priest, he's had a great solo career, and he's also, um, he's in KK Priest with KK Danny. Greg Chasen from Badlands, coming soon. John Lee Middleton from um, Sabotage. You say Sabotage, I say Sabotage. Does anyone know where that's from? Can, can anyone answer where... I say sabotage, you say sabotage, uh, whatever it is, comes from. Somebody's got to know what that is. It's a famous broadcasting clip. Uh, okay, yeah, so there's the Patreon. Go do that. And uh, and thank you to everybody here who says, um, who says they're going to follow and share. I appreciate it. So no one's guessed what that, that is from. So William Shatner did a broadcast a long time ago where he's reading a script. And the, he's, his pronunciation is sabotage. He's we have some weird pronunciation. And the guy says, how come you don't just say sabotage? And he says, you say sabotage. I say sabotage or whatever it is. And uh, 
it makes me uh, it makes me laugh. I see uh, Analog Kid saying I've been on for an hour. Is that is that disappointing you? Should I leave? I, I listen. I was having a good time chatting, I so I stayed. But if you want me to leave, I will. And yes, uh, you guys know what this is from uh, Shatner. It's William Shatner. And then you say Howard Stern clip. It's true. Howard Stern plays the clip of Shatner all the time. But it's very funny. Uh, Jakey e. Lee interview. Of course, everybody wants Jake. I think it could happen. I'm going to hit up Greg Chaston about that one. I do know Jake, but I've never had much luck uh, locking him into things. What else anyone want to know? Tell me what else you want to know. Something about anthrax. I don't know much about anthrax. I hear that COVID is the thing now. Anthrax is uh, so 2018. Uh, I know, but Frank, uh, Frank Bellow is going to be on to promote a book soon enough. Okay, uh, Jakey Lee, a lot of Jakey Lee's. Come on, guys, let's finish up strong here. Give me something uh, interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm ready. I'm open for questions. I'm open for super chat. And I am open for uh, 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 and when am I going to get Tim Scold? By the way, I sent an email <laughs> to somebody affiliated with Tim Scold. I'm seeing this these a lot. Uh, so here's Fiona Flanagan is definitely a possibility. I've, I met her when I was with, you know, working with Winger. And so I feel bad because I'm getting Chrissy Steele a lot. Someone refresh my memory who Chris, Chrissy Steele is. I'll tell you who I do. If, you, if we're talking about obscure women singers, um, I want the uh, I want the, uh, the singer for a band called Princess Peng. I think her name is Jenny Foster. I think that would be great. I love these kind of interviews. Will bands start canceling tours now this fall? Good question. I say yes. I say as the weather gets colder, uh, people get sicker. Uh, listen, these bands are getting sick, and it's going to keep happening. Uh, well, that's a good one. This is a story that needs its own show. It's actually someone I don't like talking about either. So, but it could happen. Jason from Saigon Kick. Uh, that could happen. Chrissy Steele had a great album. So Chrissy Steele is a solo artist. Okay. All right, I'm seeing a lot of the same names, but uh, someone would like to know if anyone watches anime. Fair question. This is our chance to shoot the shit. I mean, it's different, but it's not politics, not pandemic. I don't really uh, uh, like the anime. I want to. When I was a kid, anime meant like uh, they would have chicks getting banged by octopus, ten octopi, excuse me, tentacles and things like that. And it was kind of creepy. But now uh, anime is My Hero Academia. And uh, 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 the Naruto, Naruto, ah, man, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, um, Sin City Collector, remind me of the other famous anime things that we look at and, and don't uh, don't know about. See, he knows. Uh, in the Funko world, though, anime is a big thing. I, I got to give it a shot. I got to give it a shot. On does this question... Are you someone else that's seen the Ramones live? Well, of course. Yeah. I've seen the Ramones live uh, uh, many times and had an interesting, uh, I, I got to know those guys. And uh, when I talk to Jean Beauvoir, we'll talk a lot about some of my personal Ramones stories. Um, it's expensive to live in Las Vegas. I mean, it's expensive to live everywhere, but I'll tell you what, and it's a top secret, but every musician is moving out of California because uh, it, it's too expensive there. Sebastian Bach, Steve Stevens, Eddie Trunk. There's a big one that I'm not allowed to say. They're all moving here. So I, I, I think it's a deal. Uh, you're, uh, some of that stuff can be perverted for sure. Uh, do you collect the anime pops? I, I have a couple. I think maybe they came in mystery boxes or like, but uh, I'm not an expert on, um, I'm not an expert on it. I want to be. I want to be. See, I like it. Look at this. We got a whole conversation going. Penny knows her anime. And uh, wow, who knew? I'll tell you something. I was uh, hanging out with a girl. Uh, you, you know, with the, that, that, that's what the kids call it. I was hanging out, hooking up. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, and she liked this here anime. And I didn't know anything about it. And I went to her house because I was trying to uh, get to know her. And she put on this anime. And I will... Uh, tell you something uh there was a famous musician who did all the music and it might have been john sykes or adrian vandenberg but it was a really famous metal musician who was doing all the music 
And I said, you know, uh, maybe we can uh, 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 do some things later, but I'm really getting into this heavy metal anime. I cleaned that story up for you. It was disgusting. Uh, lots of anime HBO Max. Love the George Lynch interview, yes. Rick Dufay is a tough one for me because I managed Jimmy Crespo from Aerosmith, and I don't think they got along that well. Here's some more information about Chrissy Steele, which I am going to check out. Vince Neal does not live in Las Vegas anymore. He's moved to uh, uh, Nashville, I believe. Johnny Monaco has moved to Vegas in and out 50 times. Uh, I can't tell you when he's here or not. Maybe he's back. Tobias, thank you so much. I appreciate it. I, well, this is, we're doing uh, speed, speed drill here. We're getting to everything. This, the, here's a complaint that anime is too many American actors doing the voice work. Yes, there's a lot of that. Jason Green is amazing. I can't argue with you on that. Uh, Stevie Nicks just canceled an Aspen. Oh, Harry K. Cody. I, I was waiting for that one. I'm skipping Baron Rouge because I don't think anyone will know. Uh, Adrian Vandenberg, I know someone who knows him and we're working on it, but I, who knows? Nashville is the new LA. Scott Rockenfield. George made me laugh so hard when he said, what was the question again? The funniest part about George to me was when I asked him how many kids he has, and he said, man, you ask hard questions, and he counted on his hands. That George interview was a lot of fun. Ryan Latecro would be great. I did send an email to Tony Harnell at some point. We shall see. Um, you know, normally I do an hour and I get out of here, but uh, <laughs> good one. Uh, but there's 141 people watching, and so if you're watching, I'm, I'm game. Sin City Collector, will you help me later uh, to go through this and remember who the hell won? Because uh, we got uh, you're you're way more sophisticated than I am. We have Tigers Pantang, of okay, a uh, Tigers of Pantang. I like when I get the really really um, obscure ones. Guys, I I hope that you're you're enjoying the channel. I thank you so much for getting me. It's us. We're all part of this together, except for those of you who I'm going to block because you've got stupid political agendas. Um, half a million views. What a great thing. Uh, I'm so happy and, and, and proud and honored that you guys watch my my channel. Half a million viewers. And then uh, we're getting close to 7,000 subscribers. It's nuts. Pretty soon, we will be... The uh, this is going to be the number one rock and roll channel. They can't stop us. Blabbermouth, they haven't been running my headlines. They used to run everything. Jeff Tilson likes yoga. They write a story about it. Now, no one has a George Lynch interview with those crazy stories that I have. And no one's, no one's, where, where is it? Right? This is organic. Wow. War Babies. I saw War Babies when I was a young man. Good band. I'd like to have them on. But... We, we're doing it together. This is organic. You know, the, like I said, I'm not one of these musicians who's sitting at home uh, doing this just to, to, this is not a cash grab. You know, you know what I mean? This is not a cash grab. Uh, although I will, uh, for Super Chats, I will cash grab. Uh, 7K, you say that was fast, right? It was just a thousand a couple months ago. That's right. That's right. Six months. In six months, we've gotten to seven thousand. We're a little under it, subscribers, and we've gotten. Uh, and I and I'm not bragging. Do you like the new gun song? Which guns are you referring to? I like Twenty One Guns. I didn't know they had a new song. Uh, if you're talking, well, you you clarify. I, I got time. Dean Castronovo. Yeah. All right. I see a lot. And by the way, I, I, if you guys want to spend more intimate quality time with me, uh, not only fans, but every Monday and Friday, brand new interviews come out and I sit on the uh, I sit in the live chat. We live chat at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 1 p.m. Oh, oh, oh that guns. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I'll be honest with you. I haven't played it. I'm, I hear it's awful. I hear it's awful. So I'm avoiding I'm avoiding Guns N' Roses. I, I don't want to I don't want to hate them. Okay, uh, so anyway, every, new brand new interviews every Monday, every Friday, 10 a.m. I'm on there. We chat. We watch the interviews together. We have a lot of fun, and we're putting together a uh, we're putting together a little bit of a, a community here. I'm, I'm recognizing the names. We're messaging. 
If you won something today, uh, I'll be in contact with your Patreon. If you won something and you're not, uh, you're going to write me on Instagram. We're going to do it. There's a new bit of song I heard come out today. I don't know about it. Another 100 questions with Sin City Sinners. That's the Sin City Rejects. But August 27th will be like the 100th anniversary, 100th anniversary of Sin City Sinners. And I will do a show to talk about the real Sin City Sinners, not this bullshit. So anyway, guys, I thank you so much for joining me. I do have to get out of here. Uh, it's been fun. It's been real. It's been real fun. But uh, I'll be back next Wednesday. Try not to miss me. This Friday, I'll be on there. Derek Davis, Babylon AD. I thank you for supporting my channel. It means a lot to me. And I think that you fellow rock fans like it. And for those of you who are bent out of shape about politics, you're not using your head because I didn't tell you anything about what I think. I just said, don't comment. Don't waste your time. Say nice things. Be nice. You know, uh, uh, don't don't be a, don't be a, what does John Travolta say in Saturday Night Fever? Does anyone remember what he says? Don't be nice. Be nice. Don't be a, and then he says it. I thank all of you. Uh, I'm, and I'll, and we'll, we'll, I'll read these afterwards so that I can make sure I get to everybody. I don't have one of these sign-off phrases. I'm going to work on it. We should have a contest. Give me a, a sign-off phrase so I can be like one of these other pretentious assholes who uh, do this. All right, guys? And on that note, oh, oh, wait. Someone's calling me darling. I think, well, thank you, darling. I like to be called a uh, darling. Sorry. I always uh, I click on super chats and, and anyone who calls me affectionate names besides scumbag, cocksucker, jerk. Uh, anyway, love you guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.